Hello and welcome to my video. My name is DJ EF. I'm going to do a review of the Pioneer DDJ Ref 7, starting with a quick unboxing, followed up by a closer look into this controller and a test at the end, so some scratching, be juggling. Stay tuned. DJ EF, you know the deal. I represent skills. What we have here is two points instruction voucher for the pitch time. We have the um, power extension and um, of course USB control itself. Looking at the mixer, you have a um, standard Pioneer battle mixer, similar to a EGMS9 or S11, the master booth level and all of these high, mid and low, so you can choose here as well between um, USB-A or B, a sampler volume, smooth echo, silent cue, which is a cool feature. Looking at the back, you have master one, output XLR, we have master 2 RCA, we have a booth 6.35 millimeter plug. We have two different USBs. This controller can be used with two different laptops. We have channel 2, channel 1 for the mixer in case you'd like to connect some uh, CD players or some turntables where you can switch to line and phono. We have of course the ground in the middle, we have the aux. We have mic 2, mic 1, so two different microphones as well. And then um, the standby on and off, plus this thing here holding the power supply in its place. Looking at the front of the controller, we have on the left side, the mic equalizer levels in the middle, of course, the crossfader, line fader, all the curve, feeling adjust as well for the crossfaders. On the right side, you have aux and of course the um, headphone jacks. Here we come to the most important part of this video where I'm going to talk about some uh, things I liked about this uh, Ref7 and things I did not like. I would like to mention that I have nothing sponsored in this video so I have basically bought this thing by myself and so that's why you're going to hear a really an honest opinion. I'm going to start with the things I like about this controller and I'm not going to uh, compare this with the Rain 1 because first, I have no experience with the Rain 1. Second is that uh, this uh, controller is uh, like almost a year newer than the Rain 1. So you will definitely have more options here than the Rain 1. So that would not be really fair for me to do a comparison anyway. Um, starting with the with the size and, 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 and I mean everything is building one unit it's great you have the mixer in the middle where you have enough place to to do everything you're used to do on other mixers second thing is the fader it has a great feeling it's uh, very similar to the uh, DJMS9 um, thing even better third thing is um, the different options you have here um, where you can for instance uh, switch to instant scratch uh, and use immediately the samples built in uh, so you can use this as well um, without having the laptop connected so whenever you would like to, to practice uh, cuts or even beat juggling or anything so you don't need any laptop to do this the fourth thing I would like to mention here is the feeling on the platter so basically, um, it's a great feeling. It's a very, very close feeling to uh, the turntables. However, one minor thing is um, the resistance when you pull back is not like the one I'm used to when I use turntables. But I think it's a matter of uh, using other slip mats or trying to do to cut my own slip mats and see since the one um, inside are very, very thin, made from plastic, so I'm trying to use real slip mats then and see how it feels. We talked about good things on this controller and I'm going to share with you now some things which I did not like, so you can build your own opinion. First of all, the adapter. I was expecting to have uh, the standard adapter I use on other mixers on other pioneer mixers as well i was surprised to see a new adapter for this controller a special one 
uh, which means if you take this controller out for a gig and you forgot your adapter, you will be definitely struggling to get the same one. The second thing I would like to mention here is the pitch control. This one is a bit different than the one on the turntable. It's not clicking in the middle. So sometimes you'll be struggling to catch the middle. Uh, you can press, of course, the reset button, but it's a different feeling. So for me, it's one of the things I did not like. The third thing is an issue with the start stop. Uh, so when I'm holding the platter and I'm pressing start, if the crossfader is open, you will hear the start of the sound I'm on. So if I'm like on a kick drum and I press start, the platter is not moving, I'm holding the platter, you still hear the start of the sound. So basically you have to ensure the crossfader is always closed when you press the start stop button. Now we reached the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it and could get a good overview on the Rev7. It's like any other DJ gear, it has tons of pros. However, after using it for two weeks, I would definitely recommend it. So if you are a DJ used to turntables and looking for a controller which gives you a close feeling to the turntables, the Pioneer DDG Rev7 is definitely the best choice today. If you think I forgot to mention something, if you have other opinion, leave that in the comment below. I'll be happy to discuss that with you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Peace out.